the Creo people are an ethnic group based in Sierra Leone, the descendants of liberated slaves from Britain and North America. These freed slaves, many of whom fought in wars, were resettled in Freetown where their cultures blended, creating new languages. Today, the Creo account for 4% of Sierra Leone's population. Eli Mide Thomas is from the Creo Descendants Heritage Committee. She joins me now along with historian Nigel Brown Davis. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And talking about wars, I mean, they not only fought about their resettlement, I mean, they've been involved in all the recent spate of coups and counter coups and wars in Sierra Leone. Well, the Creos? Mm. <laughs> Well, we had a civil war. Yeah, I think you know that we recovered from a civil war. Yeah, but even before the civil war. Well, well lots of coups and counter coups. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that was to do with the Creos per se, because um, the Creos are not known to even be in politics. That's one of the um, things I'm hoping we will discuss. That they never entered politics. They entered the professions: medical, lawyers. That's what you find Creos. Thing, even today. So it was the, the indigenous people was, fighting it, amongst it, themselves? It was, well, it was mainly um, the politicians. Let's put it this way. Creos are not notoriously politicians as such. Right, but of course you're a historian. Yeah. That One of the places that the Creos are also noted for is their, the, the, their contribution during, I think, the Second World War, wasn't it? Yes, they, they yeah. certainly did have a contribution to the Second World War in, in fighting uh, in the RAF, in uh, sort of serving the Syrian Defence Corps and also other areas of the military as well. So. This certainly did play a role. Now, I mean, in some ways, the Creo was a bit of an experiment, wasn't it? I mean, you know, you had freed slaves coming from Britain, Canada, that's Nova Scotia, and the US, the Caribbean, all being resettled in Sierra Leone. Almost, uh, although most of them, well, let's face it, it's sort of a cycle. I mean, it's sort of a full circle, wasn't it? Because they were descendants of Africa taken away and then brought back again, but were completely different identities when they came. Indeed, when most, you left out one big lot. Most of them were from Africa, you know, right. the liberated Africans who came from along this, what was known as the Slave Coast, as far down as Congo. Yes, yeah, so all the like way that, down that sort of west yeah. coast of mm. central sort of Africa. So it was like blending all these people who um, had different languages as well, although I think Nigel will confirm it was mainly the Yorubas, they had a good proportion of mm. the liberated Africans were Yorubas, and they were all sort of thrown into this melting pot which evolved to be Creole dominant and it included Europeans as well, which is why our heritage is so rich mm, and it's extraordinary. And, yes, yes. And all I'm fascinated about, beyond the bigger historical picture, is, is jollof rice. Was it created <laughs> by the Sierra Leoneans or the Nigerians? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did it come into existence? It, it? As far as I know, jollof rice is Gambian. Okay, is it well, you know, Yeah, this is, you know... That, Actually, that, that, that's a very good point. You know, um, but... Um, well, let's get the historian to confirm. Well, is it Jolof from well, the Wolof? I, <laughs> or is it Jolof from Sierra Leone and Nigeria? I'd love to say Sierra Leone, but I do believe, I can confirm with the that it is actually from the Gambia, yes. So I, I think that's that's probably the best, best possible theory as to where it came from. But of course, of course, sorry to interrupt you there. I mean, the, those um, Creos also brought with them a lot of influence from the West, didn't they? Yes, I mean, they certainly brought in a lot of Western sort of dress. Um, they also brought in Western type of food as well. They um, sort of um, regular meals that you have in sort of Britain and America, they sort of brought into Africa. Religion, in terms of Christianity, they were, you know, mainly Christians, Methodists, Baptists, and uh, Anglicans as well. We have a lot of sort of Church of England uh, members in Sierra Leone today because of the Creole influence. Now we've got the picture of a typical sort of Creole house there, influenced by architecture. You can see it there in, from the United States. Tell us about a bit about mm. something like this. Well, that's a sort of a typical sort of what they call in Creole bodos. It's a board house, sort of a, a display of sort of, um, or sort of a, a mixture of sort of American architectural styles. So you've got sort of the, the uh, stone foundation, you've got also the shingle roof and sort of the wooden superstructure as well. And that's sort of a reflection of the fact that a lot of the blacks came from North America. They'd been sort of slaves before the American Revolutionary War and then were taken across from to England and to sort of Nova Scotia and then brought to uh, Freetown. And they brought that architectural style with them as well. I suppose it is fair to say that the Creos formed a sort of bourgeois class, didn't they? I suppose it is fair to say that. Can I just go back? You know the the um, house, it, uh, just a little story quickly. Mm -hmm. When I first went to America when, at the age of 12, I was fascinated when I saw these houses, which were so, um, you know, like the ones I'd seen in Sierra mm -hmm. Leone. And 
it took years for me to know that that was part of my heritage because obviously <laughs> at 12 you don't know that nova scotians you know went and built houses there that they used they were used to in in, mm. in the america and those houses tend to be um found in sort of southern america isn't it yeah that's it yes yeah, mm. yeah, like mm. yeah and parts of the caribbean yeah as well mm. And, and of course, the, the, a lot of the, the Victorian dresses that were worn by the women, are, are they still popular today? Well, we have, if, um, I don't know if they have the image, but the Kappa slot and Kotoku is, I mean, I have, what I have on is a, a Creole dress, but this is not your typical mm. Kappa slot. The Kappa slot is a long dress with the, um, well, we're taking, we can see the photo that's it. Of, of if it, you look right? at those women now, they, they will not be out of place in, in Victorian England. What do you yes, think? No, <laughs> Quite extraordinary. Mm, that's it. And that's a typical um, um, Creole dress, yes. Now, um, the Creole Descendants Union Heritage Committee, mm -hmm. um, the, the, an event coming up which will focus on famous Creoles who have had an impact on Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, to tell us a bit about well, what we're trying to essentially focus on is people who have made a contribution to modern Britain. So people who have fought in the war, who perhaps fought against racism and, and that sort of affected British colonial policy towards Sierra Leone and also the other West African colonies. So, you know, a few of the figures I can mention we've met focus on is, for instance, Adelaide Casey Hayford, who advocated African dress, um, was quite a feminist and advocated sort of independence for women. And also, for instance, John Henry Smythe, who fought in the Second World War as a Royal Air Force officer. And of course, you've got the very notable Dr. Davidson Nicholl, yes, um, who yes. completed the formula for insulin. And we've got his picture right. up on the screen right mm. now. Um, and he was studying at Cambridge. That's right, yeah. And although he went to London University as well, and he was a friend of my father, so I knew him. You know, so it's, it's amazing when I found out what, what he'd done as part of his PhD, because he changed, you know, treatment well, for, the world. this is it so that's one way that they've um, impacted on britain you have dr africanus horton who was the first to write about sickle cell you know and these these are people who came uh, well africanus horton wrote his book in 1874 sickle cell was discovered in mm. the west in 1910 so look at the gap extraordinary yes so now this is um black history month in london the uk mm -hmm. what's being done to mark this extraordinary heritage well, what we're sort of doing is sort of giving a series of presentations, quiz nights as well, that sort of mark the heritage, sort of heritage of the Creole people. So what we're trying to really do is engage the community and get them educated about their heritage. Because as, as, as we mentioned, a lot of people do have these relatives and friends of their family who were, did such amazing things, but some of them are not even necessarily aware. And so what we're trying to do is raise awareness about what the Creole heritage is about to Sierra Leoneans, non Sierra Leoneans alike, and to sort of raise the sort of awareness. And of course, the, the Creos had a very strong focus on education. They did indeed, yes, which is why you find that, I think in the 18th... There was a famous university, was it? Full well, of College, it was the sub -Saharan, the first Sub-Saharan mm. university. It was affiliated to Durham University, so when you got a degree degree from there, you were effectively Durham qualified as well. And people used to come from Ghana and Nigeria to go to that university. Yes, You absolutely. know, when you mention it to sort of people around that time, they tell you their dad or something. It's a famous, 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 famous university. Now, now yes. um, that, you, you, you're, you're part of the Korea Descendants Union Heritage Committee here in London, and you're hosting an event tomorrow. Where is that event taking place? How can we see it if we want to? Well, the event will be taking place at uh, St. Peter's Church, the Crypt, and so that's in Southwark, uh, in, in South East London. So if people want to come, they should come around 6 o'clock and we'll have presentations mm -hmm. and quiz night. Uh, there'll be food there as well available and we'll be able to meet some of the relatives and, and friends okay. of people who are actually figured in the actual presentations and who have actually contributed to modern Britain. Well, the key thing is, will there be jollof rice there? <laughs> <laughs> is that the only reason why you'll come to us? No, no, of course <laughs> No, no, we'll have, we're, we're going to have cre um, Creole food. So okay. Food and Thank stuff. you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. And that's your Africa wrap for tonight.